I've always been inspired by my grandpa's beautiful box joints, but I've never had the chance to learn the technique for a project, until now. My dad and I are working on a special project for my one-year-old niece, which you can see a sneak preview of here, and box joints are the secret sauce we need to bring it to life. I started off by replicating my grandpa's crosscut sled in an attempt to freehand the box cuts, but I drastically underestimated the precision they require. Spoiler alert, my rickety, hastily made replica definitely didn't cut it, and I quickly realized I needed a better solution. Luckily, with a little bit of YouTube magic, we discovered a game-changing alternative that helped me create a set of beautiful, precise box cut joints that I can proudly say were inspired by my grandpa's legacy. After some research, we came across Steve Maskery's No Dado Box Joint Jig video, which was the perfect solution to our problem. The jig consists of five basic parts. The base plate, the backboard, two bumper plates, and a shuttle that slides back and forth to control the width of the cut. We were super impressed by the design he came up with, so we'll be following his plan in this video, but making a few changes of our own along the way. We started by sketching out the rough jig layout on a piece of MDF that would soon become our base plate. Then we squared it up and cut it to size. Because we had trouble getting the runners nice and precise on the original sled, my dad 3D printed some new ones that we tested and attached. We actually just started off using one here, but later we added a second one to give us some better control. You'll see us using little 3D printed tools like this throughout the build. That's largely because this jig really requires precision, but my shop isn't set up to do anything very precisely yet, so this is a great interim solve. Next, we cut some hand relief into the corners of the backboard. Before we could get too far into the project, we needed to decide what table saw blade to use. I learned a lot about saw blades throughout this build, from the kinds of cuts they make to the style of teeth they have. It turns out, Grandpa had made some concerning customizations to his blades over the years, like knocking out every third tooth, so we went ahead and bought one instead and we'll leave his specialty blades for when we're feeling a bit braver. This style of blade is a flat top grind rip blade with carbide teeth. Its teeth have a flat top that leaves a really even, level cut, which is exactly what we need for box cut joints. We decided to opt for a no dado solution because dado stacks are frankly kind of scary and I'm not confident using one yet. With our new saw blade tested, we were ready to cut a dado down the length of the base plate for the backboard to slot into. We set up fences on either side of the workpiece to act as stops and simply cut out everything in between. Or at least, that was the plan. I don't know if you caught it, but right there you can see a problem emerge. Essentially, the offcut table and the table saw are not at the same height, so we ended up with an uneven depth in our cut. And that opened up a whole new can of worms. When we looked a little closer, we realized the table saw wasn't properly supported either, so we had to fix that as well. To make a long story short, first the saw wouldn't come off the actual table, and we realized there were screws holding it in place. Then my drill wouldn't fit into the awkward angle, so we devised a socket wrench screwdriver bit tool that worked, but then nothing could reach the other set of screws, so we just decided to cut those off, which we probably should have done to the first set of screws originally. Then we were finally able to get the saw off of the table and add some extra support, only to realize we had added too much support and had to take it off again. We got the saw back on, but still hadn't fully fixed the original height issue, so we tilted it back and slapped some eighth inch scrap underneath to bring it up to level. And then we could finally continue on with our cut. Once we finished, we realized our saw blade wasn't at a proper 90 degrees. Fortunately, it didn't matter for this cut, but we fixed it right away. We also realized our dado was just a little bit too wide, so we used some shims to fill in the extra space. Then we moved on to the bumpers. We cut them down to size and did a dry fit to make sure they looked okay and they weren't too high for the backboard. Since MDF is quite soft, and the distance between these bumpers needs to be very precise, Steve adds this steel lining to protect the blocks from damage. 
We used some CA glue to quickly attach the steel to the bumpers and they were ready to go. Then it was time for a series of glue ups. First, we glued the backboard to the base plate and checked for square. Turns out the backboard was just slightly out of 90 degrees, so we added a clamp on the top as a cantilever to pull everything back into square. Then we glued on the bumpers. And finally, we added a back block and some extra support just to be safe. The back block also serves as a guard against the blade when we're cutting. The front safety block was the next piece we got to work on. The block will rest against a small stop block on the side to keep it aligned, and it'll be held in place with a threaded rod fixed with a cam lever to allow us to take it on and off. So we needed to add a slot in the block and a hole in the base plate for the rod to pass through, and we're going to do that on Grandpa's old drill press. I slotted in the drill bit, flipped on the power, and got to work boring out the slot. I cleaned up the remaining bits with a chisel, and it was looking good. We used the front block as a guide to mark the placement for the hole in the base plate. We drilled it out on the drill press and then widened it to inset a nut flush with the plate face. This is what will hold the rod in place. With the basic frame built, it was time to move on to the shuttles. These are the pieces that will slide back and forth in the jig to allow us to make various size box cut joints. We cut down the board to length, keeping it a bit smaller than the space would allow, so it would have room to slide. Then we needed to add screws to either end to allow precision adjustments to the length of the shuttle. Because we're working with MDF, we had to add some dowels to give the screws something to hang on to. These ones are actually handles from old sponge brushes that I figured would maybe come in handy one day. And I guess today's that day. We're going to need to reference the blade curve throughout the rest of the build, so I'm just running the jig through the table saw to make that cut. And I just love how smooth and sturdy this jig is. The next step was to make a key that will control the spacing throughout the cut. In this case, we're making one and a half inch box joints, so we need a one and a half inch key. And it needs to be placed, you guessed it, one and a half inches from the kerf of the blade to keep the spacing aligned. That little red shim sitting in the kerf is another piece my dad 3D printed to help us measure correctly. We made two marks one and a half inches apart on the shuttle and began to cut out the space for the key. This needed to be very precise, so I just slowly snuck up on these measurements to make it as accurate as possible. After the first cut, I realized I had set the blade a bit too high, so I adjusted it before continuing. I always make sure to unplug the saw anytime I'm going to be adjusting the blade. It can get kind of annoying, but it is way better safe than sorry, especially with power tools. It's worth mentioning that each shuttle is purpose-built for a specific joint size. So in the future, if I ever want to cut anything other than one and a half inch box cut joints, I'll need to build another shuttle specific to that new size. 
With the key in place, it was time to turn our attention to making micro adjustments with the shuttle screws. So we're going to go firmly against this, yep. and I take it out. So it moved a little bit, so we need to back it out just a tiny bit. All the way over. Good. We're over. Okay, we're done. Now we can do the right side. For the right side, we needed the space between the kerf and the key to be 3 inches, which is the distance of one tooth and one gap of the box cut joints. We used calipers to measure and then made adjustments as needed. Then we made a test cut to make sure it all looked good. And it didn't. Somewhere in the process, we forgot to account for the curve of the blade, so the cut ended up being a sixteenth too big. With the screws adjusted, we decided to try another test, but this time we cut out the entire gap. On this try, the cut was just a little bit too narrow and the whole thing was really messy. I think I was relying on the clamp holding the test piece and the shuttle together too much and the vibration of the table was throwing things out of whack. So we tried again. And you know what they say, the third time is most definitely the charm. Throughout the test cuts, we noticed a few little things that we wanted to tweak about the jig, starting with the front safety block. It's great to keep your hands safe, but it blocks your view of the cuts you're making, so it's hard to know where to line up your piece. We decided to cut a little viewing window into the block to help alleviate that. We also ran into a problem with the cam lever, where it would unthread from the top instead of the bottom, meaning you needed to remove the handle and all its little bits every time you needed to pull the safety block off. So we went ahead and just damaged the threads on the top of that rod so it would unscrew from the bottom instead. And with those changes made, it was time to really put this jig to the test. Need to check it when you're not here. What we didn't realize at this point was there were still a few more surprises in store for us with this jig, but we're going to cover those issues in the upcoming project video, so stay tuned to find out all of that and more. We want to give another big shout out to Steve for his brilliant jig plan. If you haven't already, please check out his original video, which you can find in the description, and we'll see you next time.